Hello everyone, this is Hazel and welcome back! Um, I'm really happy to film this video today um, because I'm going to talk about my first year experience in Edinburgh after I quitted um, University of Hong Kong for the first year. Um, yeah, and I feel like this will be very helpful for those who are considering whether or not to study in UOE, um, especially during July and August, um, which is which is all the results announcement dates, such as like Hong Kong DSD or A levels or IB programs, etc. Topics are divided to campus and learning experience, um, which includes the campus itself, on my course, um, the degree system, and also the learning experiences, of course. And then the second part will be about living in Edinburgh. I'll talk about the city, whether Scottish people, um, accommodation and the living expenses. I'll also include a lot of footages I filmed in semester one and some I filmed in the beginning of 2020. Yeah. So that will give you an insight of what the city is like and the campus itself. So this will be the part one of the video and part two, I'll talk more about my student life and also some of the main highlights, um, some advice and regrets about my first year. So those will be in part two. Remember to subscribe and turn on the notifications to get updates for my second part of the video. So first off, the campus itself is extensive and it spreads across the country, especially in, in the whole town because the, the uni is in the old town area. There are a lot of spectacular old buildings, um, including like old college, which you could always see that online because it's so famous and they always use that as their cover photo. Yeah, that is old college, uh, which is one of my favorites. And also some modern buildings like McEwen Hall is also very beautiful. I really like it. Also, there are some really ugly buildings to look at, like Gordon Aikman Lecture Theatre Hall, something like that. But um, what I like my uni the most is the meadows, which is a very extensive grassland, like green area. That is so beautiful, and especially when you go out there and enjoy the sun, like I could see a lot of people going there just to have a picnic or just to have a little chat with their friends. Um, the Meadows is also located next to the library, so when you're stressed, when you're too tired, just go there for a walk. Or maybe when you're sitting in the library just working, um, you could always feel happier when you see the grass, when you see the beautiful sunset. So yeah, so that is actually one of my favorite things to do when, I, when I'm in the library. Yeah. So just now I also mentioned Oak College, which is the law school. Um, I sometimes have my um, law school courses there and I work a lot in the law library as well, which is a very, very beautiful library. I just love it so much. And if you want to get your work like done quickly, to be efficient, to be productive, just go there. I, I swear you could achieve a lot in that library when all the people there um, are just like working, working so hard and that will motivate you so much, like, yes. So some of the bad things about the campus itself is that um, it is somehow too extensive <laughs> and then it, it is also quite scattered across the city. So if you have another lecture in another building or another tutorial, you have to actually walk quite fast within a short period of time to get there for your lessons. And that will be very frustrating, especially when the weather is so bad, like windy, rainy, snowing, and this, that is just so annoying. So that is something that I don't really like about so but Next, my course, um, I'm doing a four year Master of Arts Sociology honors degree. And you'll be confused, like, wow, masters? No, actually it's just an, an um, 
it's just an undergraduate degree but um, usually they don't do like bachelor's degree so all of us are called as masters of XXX something like that um, yeah and also because of the system like Scottish system that's different from England's so we have a four-year degree so you can choose a single honors or a double one but for me I choose a single one because um, there are other combinations but I just don't like them I just don't feel like I could be passionate enough for other subjects and carry it on for four years which is so frustrating for me if I don't like something so yeah I don't think I don't think that it matters a lot because um, for me I feel like the advantage of having a single honors degree is you could really dive in that subject more especially when you go to year three and four but for year one and two I could get more other credits to study um, other electives other courses that I am quite interested about uh, so for example I get to learn um, Spanish and also criminology criminal justice etc so that is actually really fun if you could um, also study subjects that are outside of your school. The learning part, um, I think the lectures are quite quite good, yeah, lectures are quite good because most of them are recorded and if you miss one or if you're not available to attend it one day, you could definitely go over it and that will actually help you a lot when you're studying for exams or tests. Um, but um, some of the lectures are quite boring, like really quite boring. I just slept off for the whole lecture um, but um, and I've also come across some really really good lecturers which are really inspiring and they also deliver the lecture really well in a very organized way so that you won't really like miss out or, or just misunderstand a lot of stuff um, as for tutorials I particularly like mine from um, criminology um, because the tutor really explains all the concepts in detail and clears off my misunderstandings, breaks down the issue, give us a lot of examples, case studies, etc. which is very helpful for understanding the concepts, understanding the subject, etc. Um, but some of the tutorials like mine from sociology, um, it really focuses on discussions, it focuses on whether or not the students have prepared, have read all the readings. So that will be quite disappointing if um, we don't really get prepared for the lesson and it just feels like the time has wasted. So if you want to learn more tutorials, definitely do your preparations and also ask questions to initiate discussions and that will be very helpful for, for your studies. So generally speaking, I think tutorials and lectures are quite nice in your Yi, um, especially for the structure and um, the quality of the lecturers and tutors. When I compare that to my experience in, in, in HKU, I feel like um, the students in my class are not really like that, that passionate about what they are studying. So somehow that could affect um, it a lot because like people don't really prepare for the for the tutorials they don't really talk a lot they don't really ask questions which could make the whole thing become more dull and boring that's why I would like to move on to my next bit which is learning atmosphere so since I have my experience in the Hong Kong U for the first year I could compare the two unis and I would say I have a better learning atmosphere in UAE. First off, um, students and friends that I've made are really passionate about their degree, about what they are studying, about their course. So I could actually learn a lot from them, like especially when we are discussing about the subject and when we are studying together, that actually helped me a lot because they are very knowledgeable. And somehow, because we are from different culture, backgrounds and especially for sociology it, it touches a lot on um, cultures on race on ethnicity that is very inspiring to talk to other people with other backgrounds when we are working on our assignments we always have like um, some chats about oh how will you um, tackle this topic or how will we approach um, to this to this issue so we talk about it a lot and then we exchange our ideas we help each other out um, and when we 
misunderstand some concepts, they are always there for you. So generally speaking, I really like um, the learning atmosphere in Edinburgh more than um, the ones I've experienced in Hong Kong U. The reason behind why I don't like my experiences in Hong Kong U, I will actually talk about it in another separate video because it's, it's too much to talk about. I feel like that would be too lengthy. So yeah, stay tuned. Alright, so for living in Edinburgh, um, I'll talk about the city itself first. Um, it is incredible really like very incredible city especially the historical buildings and this particular view for me i personally consider myself as a city girl because i'm i'm, I'm from hong kong and hong kong is such a financial hub very crowded very um, chaotic very fast-paced um and at the beginning i'm quite afraid that i won't like that kind of life in edinburgh but I'm wrong, I'm totally wrong because I feel more relaxed and happier there. Like, um, I used to love shopping a lot, like, because I'm in Hong Kong, there's a lot of shopping malls, I could go everywhere just to, like, hang around with my friends, go to, go to restaurants, go to shopping malls, like, etc. But in Edinburgh, the whole experience is different. We get to just, like, go to cafes, just, chill just walk walk on like and do more like different relaxing activities or maybe climb climb Carlton Hill climb Arthur seat etc and um, that is just a very different experience for me so um, I feel like the quality of life there is so much higher in Hong Kong. Okay, for weather, um, weather is annoying, frustrating, and confusing <laughs> a lot of times because, uh, yes, it's rainy, it's very windy, and cold as well. But um, actually, it does not really bother me a lot. But like sometimes I really find it quite frustrating because somehow like for example um, when it's 9 o'clock it's, it's super sunny at 10 it just starts raining out of nowhere and then suddenly like after 30 minutes it's sunny again and then after one hour it's super windy like you could never know what the weather is like in Edinburgh because it just changes all the time. Also, because it's super windy there, um, the umbrella is actually useless when it's raining. But when there's sunlight, you will definitely want to go out and just like, just do everything you want to because it's um, a rare occasion there. For the temperature, of course, Scotland is quite cold. But for me, I quite enjoyed it because um, I prefer winter more than summer and I always feel like in Hong Kong we don't experience a winter and then it's so boring and it's too hot, too humid. So yeah, I like the temperature in Scotland, in, in Edinburgh more than in Hong Kong. Alright, for locals, um, they are really friendly and also a lot of people are quite open-minded. but. But their accent is really quite difficult to understand for most of the people, I could say. Like even though um, some of my friends are from from other parts of the UK, from England, from Wales, etc., they also find it quite hard to understand sometimes. And also, they um, some of my Scottish friends um, or locals, they will include their slangs when they are talking stuff. So. Yeah, that would be quite difficult to understand, but I don't think that is a problem for you to make friends. You can still make friends with them because they are really nice and then they are also really easygoing as well. So, so for discrimination, I could say I'm quite fortunate that I have not experienced any of them yet. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, of course, I could say it's it's not non-existence because some of my friends do experience that but um, I feel like if you experienced any kind of racism, um, discrimination, you could always 
um, seek for help and um, don't be afraid to speak out as well. Okay, for living expenses, um, compared to Hong Kong, it's a lot cheaper when it comes to activities, food and alcohol. Like, of course, I mean the food that we could buy in in supermarket, but not like dining in restaurants. I think those are around 10 to 20% off compared to um, the price in Hong Kong. But in general, I could say it's quite expensive compared to other parts of the UK, like except London. For me, each month, excluding the paid accommodation expenses, it cost around 400 to 600. Yeah, I'm not really sure because each month it, it fluctuates a lot, but I think around that price range. Yay, so for the last part, accommodation. Um, for my first year, I lived in uh, one of the students' halls called Salisbury Court. So I, I'll include some of the footages here. It's very nice looking, very clean, very modern, and with a close proximity to um, my university and um, the city. I live in a twin room, which um, is actually a rare occasion as most of the students there uh, would choose to live in flats um, which are like single ensuite rooms but um, in one flat you will get to have maybe six to ten so most of the room options in um, UOE is flats my room is actually a studio because it's um, it, it got it got bathroom and the kitchen and also our room all in all in one room but it's also really large my room is so large and then um, I'm also very lucky to get a room that is facing the other seat which is a really really beautiful mountain and I could always see the breathtaking view uh, after I woke up however if I could pick a game I may go for flats because um, I could meet more people there and then I could also have my own room like my own ensuite room or maybe non ensuite room um, but yeah just like generally I could get more privacy on my own so overall I highly recommend going for Salisbury Court um, it's a really nice accommodation and then um, also if you have more budget definitely go for ensuite rooms ensuite single rooms so that's all for this video otherwise going to be super lengthy but yeah just always let me know what you're interested in. Um, if you have any questions, just pop it down below on the comment section. At last, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel and my Instagram here. Yeah, see you guys next time.